Welcome back everybody. Uh, today we will finally uh, measure groundwater recharge. So, so far we've seen the water cycle, the freshwater cycle, how much groundwater there is in the world and all the approximations there is with, you know, knowing how much there is in the ground. Uh, today we will use hydrographs to calculate how much groundwater is actually recharged during rain events. So there's two uh, short lectures on this. The first one today, uh, we will look at a single event. So how much groundwater is recharged during you know, one rain event or one hydrograph. And then in the next lecture, we will uh, look at the annual time scale and you know, over the course of a season, how much water actually recharged or discharged, uh, how much the aquifer gained or lost uh, over the whole season. So that's the next lecture. Uh, so this first lecture, we call it the recession method or the recession curve displacement method. Uh, and just a <clears throat> uh, quick reminder of what hydrographs are. Uh, so here's a, a plot of data from here at Purdue. Uh, so again, this is the Wabash River uh, that goes through town here. Uh, and in blue here, you have the flow in the river uh, over the course of a few years from you know, 2015 to 2018, 19. Uh, and then at the top, those uh, orange bars are the rain events. And you can see the correlation, of course, between you know, rain and discharge. So when it rains, there's more flow in the river. Uh, so for this first method, the displacement method, we will look at just one single event. Uh, here is a little animation of you know, a, hydrograph, a typical hydrograph. Uh, and we start at base flow. And then, of course, the w discharge level of the water level rises to a peak. And then, um, you know, the falling limb, so decreases back down to a base flow. So what's interesting here is the recession, right? So that what we call the recession in that is that falling limb or between the peak and, you know, the return to base flow and what's going on there. And you can see there's several um, uh, different phases during the recession. So if we look here, uh, let me see if I can, yep. So if we look at this first part here and then this second part and third part. Okay, so the first one is a very fast recession and that's typically overland flow. So when there's a, you know, big rain event, somewhere will infiltrate, but you know, if there's too much rain or it's too intense, then at some point there's some surface flow basically you can see like those uh, runoff on the surface of um, the land and that goes to the river very fast okay so this is a fast recession that can be linked to overland flow uh, then after that there's a somewhat slower recession that second uh, part here um, and this is typically due to some water that infiltrated and is pushing, so it's sort of a piston flow, it's kind of pushing the water, still somewhat fast towards the river, flushing out to the river, uh, but with some underground uh, flow path. And then finally, there's a, uh, a much slower return to base flow. And this is really where typically uh, we're taking that, you know, groundwater sort of aquifer, you know, pushing water back to the river and then finally we get to you know the slower one which is the ba base flow so again you can sort of link uh, these different periods to physical processes or flow processes on the landscape so overland you know interflow and then the return to base flow uh, okay so finally we get to the method okay what can we do so when we have a hydrograph like this like a single event how can we analyze the data to measure or to calculate how much groundwater was recharged. And here on the right hand side, you have basically the method, and this is uh, from your book. Uh, so this is given in Fetter, uh, chapter two. Um, and you can see that basically, what, so there's a couple things you need. The first one is the time it takes to drop one log. So the time it takes to drop, right? to divide the flow by 10, if you want. Drop one log, right? We divide the flow by 10. So you can see here on the y-axis, we have a log scale. So 1, 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000. And on the x-axis, we have a linear scale. So just days, okay? So dropping one log is going from, say, 100 
to 10, for example, right? And in this case, of course, this uh, plot is made so that the one log is basically dropped in 45 days. Right, so you can look at how long it takes. So for example, here to go from here to here, right? That's a log, right? That's about a log. So it's 45 days, right? That's your T1, what we call T1. Then the critical time, I'll define that a little better in the next slide, but for now, just running through the method, right? So you calculate or you read how long it takes to drop one log. Then you calculate that critical time, and again, I'll define that later, which is about 0.2, um, the T1, okay? So 20%-ish, a little more than T1. So in this case, right, if you divide uh, 45 days uh, by five, right, uh, that gives you about nine. Whoops, excuse me. So you have 45 days for T1, and nine days for uh, TC. Then you read the discharge at TC, okay? So at TC, again, this is the critical time after the peak, right? So nine days after the peak, you read what the discharges uh, are. Now, notice here that there's a second uh, rain event, so what you wanna do is interpolate this first slow recession here as if it was continuing, right? So again, that's where you need that uh, one, two, three, right? That third sort of slope so you can interpolate if there's a second rain event. If there's no other rain event, then that's fine. Okay, so once we, you have QA, which is again, you read on the first base flow recession, and then QB, right, on that new uh, recession, now you have two different discharges. And then what you do is you plug it in this equation here, so the groundwater recharge, and again, I'll go through the derivation of this in the next slide, is two times the difference in discharge times the T1, so 45 days, divided by 2.3. And if you calculate this, you can see that you get a volume of groundwater that has recharged during that one rain event, okay? So we can calculate how much water we actually have in the ground now. Okay, where is that uh, equation coming from? So the critical time, I said I would define it, that's the time when the volume of the total potential groundwater discharge, so potential groundwater discharge, equals half of the total discharge. Okay, so at this time we have half the volume basically um, that is remaining, right? So it's half. So that's where we can get two uh, in a minute. So once you have the, so, and this is a volume, right? So this is the discharge times the time. And the 2.3 here is just a constant or, a, you know, you modify because you're in, log 10 here to the normal log, so don't worry about the 2.3, just in the cookbook, basically. And that will somewhat disappear in the next slide. What's important to understand is that that volume is just a discharge time T1. So if you look at discharge times T1, what you get, right, is basically this volume, this whole volume here, okay? Now the change in the total potential discharge, that delta here, right, is the change between that QA and QB. So let me write this one on the plot. So if we look at QB here times T1, we get this amount. Now the difference between the two, right, is basically this amount. Okay, so this is a volume of water that actually, right, so before that we were here and now we are here. So the difference between those, this volume here is the volume of recharge, basically the volume of groundwater of new groundwater that is now in the ground and seeping slowly back to the river again. So that's really that uh, delta VTP. Now again, at the critical time, we said, that's when uh, the volume is half, right? So now we have half of that volume remaining at the critical time. So if you look at this, this is roughly true here, right? So when you have half the volume remaining, you can say that G, right, equals two times delta VTP because again, that's when it's half, so you multiply it by two. So two times del VTP, 
is the total amount of groundwater. So this total amount here, you can calculate as two times del VTP. And again, so if you write this, you know, with the definition, that's what we had before, that means the groundwater recharge equals two times the Q1 minus QA times T1, and again, divided by 2.3 just by definition. If you look here, I said it would roughly disappear. You have two divided by 2.3 here, right? So we're not far from unity. So it's a little less than one times, you know, this whole volume here, right? It's a little bit less than that just because of the constant. And this is really how this works. Okay, so yeah, so this is how we use a single rain event to calculate the amount of water, so the volume of water that actually infiltrated down to the groundwater and is seeping back to the river as base flow. Thank you, and I'll see you on the next video when we look at the annual time scale.